What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Emblem Heroes. So today we got the trailer for the Suzer Legends 4 units and we finally know the weapons and skills of Edelgard and Dimitri. So this is pretty exciting because we already knew the skills of Claude and Lysithia. So here we have Dimitri as a Lance Infantry unit and we did see that he did have this encounter, some kind of damage reduction. And as I was thinking, he does have Moon Gradivus, which is really amazing. The trend is having the Arcanea Regalia. Um, on these units. So Moon Gradivus of course has this encounter built into it and it gives him special cooldown charge plus one per foe's hit during the combat. So this is pretty much similar to Owain's Mistletane where he can instantly retaliate back with a two turn cooldown special and this does work in player phase as well. Uh, but Dimitri is just mainly like an enemy phase unit so he's gonna be using that mostly. And he's got Noontime as a special for the self-sustainability, which is really good. And he can instantly retaliate back with Noontime, which is really strong, uh, especially when he's such a good tank. And his slotted skill is a new line of skill, which is really, really, really powerful in my opinion. Because these skills are pretty much taking the niche of Fallen Ike and making them into a slotted skill. So attack defense unity uh, basically is a better bond skill where if the unit is within two spaces of an ally, they get plus five attack and plus five defense. And the penalty that they might have to their attack or defense gets multiplied by two and they get the net bonus depending on the debuff which they have in their stat. So here they give us the example where if he has got a minus seven penalty to his attack, uh, this skill pretty much gives him plus 19 attack. Now you might think it should be like plus 14 um, for a net bonus of uh, 7. But they are actually adding the plus 5 attack from the base condition of this skill. So that's why they say plus 19 attack. Um, so he does not really ignore the penalties. He just gets powerful through these penalties. And this is really good in a meta game where penalties are just so common. If you use Fallen Ike, you know how strong he is with that Chaos Ragnar. So this is basically that kind of effect but only for attack and defense and occupying his slotty skill so definitely a really good skill and uh, this these type of skills are gonna be extremely powerful the first place winners of choose your legends always have their exclusive skills and this is dimitri's blue lion rule and this is a damage reduction skill similar to close call repel but it compares defense instead of speed and this is really good because a lot of times, a lot of nukes are going to be having a lot of offense in their speed and attack stats. So, like having these speed scaling skills like Close Call and Repel versus them can be a bit hard to trigger. But defense? A Glass Cannon is not going to be having a defense as much as an enemy face tank like Dimitri. So he can easily get 40% damage reduction uh, with this kind of skill. The downside is pretty much when he's going to be facing extremely tanky slow units where other close call and repel tanks would have an edge because they are faster and they could get the damage reduction. So against them, Dimitri might not be able to get that because they will also have pretty high defense. But nonetheless, like defense based damage reduction is really good and helps Dimitri a lot. It's definitely pretty uh, unique, I would say, and quite powerful when he's going to be facing a lot of nukes who are just offensively oriented. And this pretty much leads us to believe that he's not gonna be having very, very high speed because this weapon is also giving him a better quicker post. So if foe initiates combat, he makes a guaranteed follow-up attack. So this kind of thing is really good for a unit like him, but I don't think he's gonna be too slow. Like he's not gonna be a snail. Uh, his speed could be worked out, but it's not gonna be on the higher side, I don't think. And he has got Joint Tone Attack. I wish this was Joint Drive Attack because then it would have really good synergy with Attack, Defense, Unity. Uh, but nonetheless, this is a pretty good base kit. And the reason why I say that he is not going to be too slow is because he doesn't get doubled by this Bow Flyer. Both the Generic Bow Flyers in general have like 30, 40, 35 speed. If he was a Snail, he would get doubled here. And you might think that Dimitri has got so much defense, then why is he taking 7 damage from this Bow Flyer? Well, the thing is that this bow flyer has got a shining bow, so he is getting the true damage out of that shining bow. So you could, uh, you know, in a way, try to think that Dimitri definitely has way more defense than resistance because he's getting hit uh, by this true damage, full true damage of shining bow, which is 7. So Dimitri is going to be having extremely high attack, extremely high defense, definitely going to be having above average resistance, I think and definitely workable speed stat. It's not going to be high. I think it's going to be 
around like 31 to 34, somewhere around that. I don't think he's going to be having very high speed. Um, but it does work out because he could speed stack to the point where he cannot get doubled and he can get the guaranteed doubles from his exclusive slot B skill. So definitely a really, really good enemy face Lancey net. His main competition is basically going to be female Chris and he just has a lot of effects in his base kit. Then we have got our boy Claude. So we did know his stats uh, from the Fae channel. If you haven't watched my video, you should definitely go check it out. I did uh, discuss that. So... Based on the stats, we did know what kind of thing he would have uh, as his weapon, and it's pretty much that, but this thing is this thing is way better than what I expected. So, Wind Parthia gives him minus one special cooldown, we knew as much. It's effective on flying units, and if unit initiates combat, or if unit is within two spaces of an ally, which is extremely easy to fulfill, he gets plus five to all of his stats, and also he heals 50% of his maximum HP whenever his special triggers. So because of this, Claude is one of the best self-sustained units in the entire game in my opinion. He doesn't have the highest bulk like Dimitri or Edelgard for sure, but sustainability is something that Claude has got. And this is a reference to his Crest of Regan. So just to give you an example, I think after actual healers, you know with Recover Plus, Rehabilitate Plus, Claude's healing is second to them. It's, it's giving him healing that is way better than something like Aether could ever give. And this is and this is just too consistent because he can always retaliate back with a special like Moonbow, which is a one-turn special for him, and just gain HP. He's uh he's definitely gonna be hard to kill if you cannot just one-shot him. And one-shotting him is gonna be not that hard because he's a flying unit, unless he has got IO shield. But Claude can be deceptively tanky because of this thing. And he also gets plus five to all of his stats. So he doesn't have that like top tier defenses, but definitely is not super super frail as you would expect him to be so i think claude is definitely pretty amazing and quite underrated honestly because this kind of healing is pretty insane it just offsets the fury damage in a way and uh this can be scaled up pretty easily with summoner support um mythic or legendary boost or just you know adding merges and stuff like that so definitely pretty amazing and quite unique he's got moonbo as a special fury 4 Chill speed defense, which is uh, not really the best skill because you're only going to be debuffing like one foe uh, a lot of times. And like in general, flyers don't really have very good slot B skills. He cannot have access to dive bomb. He cannot have access to guard bearing. So he doesn't have too many slot B options. And his weapon has got anti-synergy with stuff like vantage or desperation because he's constantly going to be healing up HP. So that could be a thing which might be a con for him, I guess. And he also has attack speed rain, uh, which gives minus four attack and speed debuff during the combat to foes within two spaces. And this kind of thing is extremely powerful because this is in combat debuff, which means it can stack up with visible debuffs. And it is always going to be active for Claude himself and other allies can also benefit from this. I think this is going to be a flyer exclusive skill because if you take a close look at the icon of this skill, you can see a wyvern and a pegasus. So I think this is going to be a flyer exclusive skill and that's why Claude comes with it. Um, which does make sense because flyers definitely need some better like skill options I would say. They're just logged out of way too many uh, skill options. So here he like recovers half of what his max HP is. So he recovers 21 HP um, if he has got neutral HP IV. So Claude is definitely quite offensive. He does have decent attack and he is quite fast. So doubling him is going to be a bit hard unless you have some kind of follow up type of uh, thing like auto follow up so he can be pretty tanky and I guess he's trying to function in both phases and we don't really have too many like both flyers in general so Claude really doesn't have much competition speaking of competition um, her original version kind of gives competition to this Lysithia so brave Lysithia is a red mage infantry we all knew that and she has got dark spikes T which is effective on cavalry units we already know her stat spread and she gets plus three speed from dark spikes and at start of combat, if the foe is above 75% HP, then she gets plus 6 attack and speed during the combat. And if she's not at full health, and if she initiates combat, then she can make a guaranteed follow-up attack before a foe can counter attack. So this is basically like a better desperation. And unless I'm mistaken about this, she gets a guaranteed follow-up attack. So she can bypass stuff like Weary Fighter. Now you might think this is just desperation, how can she do that? Um, I think the wording of uh, Forseti, Persecution Bow, and Desperation doesn't mention guaranteed word. 
but Dark Spikes T has that, so I think she can, you know, just push through stuff like Weary Fighter and still double and uh, just, you know, get the Desperation hit on them. So that's gonna be pretty interesting. Um, and she's got Moonbow as her special. She's gonna be hitting extremely hard. <laughs> so she's got Moonbow. If you have resistance, she'll get even more damage. Attack speed push four, lull speed resistance, and hone speed four. So Lysithia, in my opinion, de definitely faces a bit of competition from her older self because the original version of Lysithia packs a lot of punch and can one shot foes. So she is more focused on one shotting with Time Pulse and Hades. Um, but this Lysithia is a bit more concerned with doubling foes with her better desperation in her weapon. So she doesn't really have that kind of oomph on her first hit, in a sense, um, where she would be able to one-shot. I mean, she will be able to one-shot a lot of low-resistance units, but when it comes to raw damage output for one-shotting, uh, Original Lysithia still has it. And uh, Brave Lysithia is a bit easier to face than Original Version of Lysithia, because Original Version of Lysithia can just one-shot you. But this Lysithia needs to be below 100% HP to get her guaranteed follow-up attack. And if you're gonna be putting her in Aether Raid's defense or something like that, then she is mostly gonna be at full HP unless you get hit by Bolt Tower or something like that, or a well-placed Bolt Trap. Um, so normal version of Lysithia is still gonna be pretty good. But nonetheless, she's just a very, very powerful nuke who's extremely fast and has got really, really good attack stat. And also, uh, she can run other things like Null Follow-Up, Lull Skill, or Special Spiral in her slot B because she has got Desperation in her weapon. And then we've got Edelgard. So Edelgard also had a distant counter type of thing, a damage reduction, um, and we knew that much. So she has got Flower Autclair, uh, so <laughs> this is a pretty nice thing which they have done. So basically it's based on the route name of their routes in three houses. So Flower Autclair gives her minus one special cooldown, and at start of turn, if she's above 25% HP, she can move one extra space, and she also gets Order's buff, basically. So it's pretty similar to the thing which you get after getting danced by Peony and her Flower of Joy. So that Otter's buff just allows her to teleport around any kind of ally within two spaces. And this is the best thing about Brave Edelgard that she has, um, you know, just nullified one of the two major weaknesses which armor units always have, which is mobility. She's still susceptible to armor effective damage, of course, uh, but at least she can solve her mobility issue, so that is really good. And at start of combat, if Yunette's HP is above 25% HP, then she gets minus 6 attack and defense to buff on the foe during the combat. So this is like so easy to trigger. Basically, if she's not like fully dead, she can have these kinds of effect, which is very strong. She's got noon time, which she can use to self-sustain. And here comes the part which I don't like, Distant Ward. Why would you give her Distant Ward? It's strictly worse Distant Counter because like she has sky high defense most likely. She could one round KO so many threatening bow units and dagger units, but she cannot because she is not gonna be able to tally it back to them unless you inherit this encounter on her, of course. So why just do this? This encounter has been present on so many units. You could have given Brave Edelgard that. This in ward, I mean, I, I don't like it. I don't like it, man. They could have easily given her this encounter. Brave Hector. Choose her Legends 2 unit has this encounter. You could have done something like that. And her exclusive skill is Black Eagle Rule. So if she's above 25% HP, uh, she makes a guaranteed follow up attack. Also, if foe initiates combat, the damage is reduced by 80% of their follow up attacks. So this is like Urban level of uh, damage reduction. 80% is a lot. So basically, you try to just one shot her, um, but still, like, armor effective weapon users can still take her out despite this just because of the the effective damage essentially but still you know the damage reduction is really nice uh, because she's always gonna get doubled she is gonna be extremely extremely slow so this does mention the brave hits from brave weapons as well so definitely gonna be pretty nice against that and she's got joint drive resistance so all in all Edelgard is a tank in it like in entirety she could be compared to Legendary Edelgard, but I think that's a bit of an off comparison even though both of them are Axe Armors. The reason being is that both of them kind of excel in different areas. Legendary Edelgard, while she could be a good tank, she's mainly used as a player phase unit with Raging Storm and her Gale Force build. But Brave Edelgard is strictly a very good um, 
tank. She can also function as a Gale for Cena, but not to the degree of uh, Legendary Edelgard, I would say. Because minus one special cooldown reduction from her weapon can make Gale Force a uh, four turn special, but she doesn't really get any kind of special acceleration out of her slot B skill. And she cannot really run Bullfighter or Venture Fighter to get that. She could definitely run Heavy Blade uh, as a Sacred Seal. Still a pretty powerful Enet, actually. So that is gonna be my overview of these skills of these Enets. And uh, as usual, as I do every year, I have my polls up on my YouTube community tab and also on my Twitter. So you could vote on that and pick the Enet that you're gonna be picking. The most picked Enet is gonna be my free pick for the free to play guides. Uh, when it comes to my opinion, I think Dimitri and Claude are also really, really good free to play options. Uh, I wish Edelgard had this encounter. I really wish because that would have been absolutely perfect. Um, Lysithia is a very hard hitting mage, but she's extremely frail. She can be fulfilled by other kinds of nukes for sure uh, when it comes to free to play guides. But time and time again, we have learned that uh, range units are really good. So Claude is definitely going to be pretty amazing. And Dimitri it does fulfill the role of uh, being a very tanky unit. And at this point in the lifespan of game, Legendary Ike doesn't really cut it when it comes to tanking Abyssal maps because the enemies are just too inflated. Uh, Dimitri does, you know, compete with Fiorm, I guess, for the Lance Infantry unit, but the tanking capability of Dimitri is way, way better and way more consistent than Fiorm, and he's gonna be having way better damage output. So. That's personally my opinion, but at the end of the day, I'm just going to be picking uh, whatever unit is the most popular one, which most people have picked. So that way, I can cater to more people with my free-to-play guides. And, uh, you know, this time we have the spark system, so even if you get some other unit as a free pick, if you do care about free-to-play guides, you can still just spark the neutral IV version of that unit. And, you know, just keep them for the free-to-play guides, so... Yeah, that's basically going to be it. Please be sure to vote on that, because that does decide a lot of things in my videos. So I would really appreciate if you could take like two minutes and vote on that. And uh, I want to just uh, see what kind of uh, mythic we get next month because we usually have paralogs um, for these Chooser Legends units, but we're getting a story chapter. So they are trying to uh, make the story move faster. So maybe they could release the original characters as mythic units. I don't know, Plumeria, Triandra, maybe as an Astro Mythic. So that is going to be it for this video. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support. And if you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. Helps me tremendously. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Because expecting YouTube sub boxes to work is like expecting Lysithia to not nuke. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.